always telling you that when the economy really takes off, you need to own the cyclicals, the companies that depend on a strong business cycle to really make their money, because that's when they catch fire. And few things are more cyclical than United Rentals, simple URI, the largest equipment rental company on earth. These guys rent out machinery to all sorts of construction firms, utilities, industrials, home builders, oil and gas firms, even government entities. Here's a stock that's already up nearly 60% year to date, and that's effectively quadrupled from its lows in early 2016. Wow. But with United Rentals seemingly hitting new highs every week, could this be the time to ring the register and park your money somewhere else? Or should we let it run? Earlier today, I had a chance to check in with Mike Nealon, the president and CEO of the United Rentals. Take a look. Mike, first, congratulations on 20 years. Could you give me the arc of your terrific company? Sure. We started uh, 20 years to the day. <laughs> to the day. Uh, and when we started, when we went public, uh, we were about $60 million in revenue and about 390 employees. Today, we're over $6.5 billion in revenue and about 15,000 employees. So 20 years has been, uh, a lot has happened in 20 years. Now, there are periods where people have doubted the company. I remember in the depths of the Great Recession, people had given up on you, but your business really kind of held in when you think about it. Yeah, it, look, it, it, it was challenging for everybody. I mean, it was the, it, any, any business was suffering. But, uh, you know, our business, unlike other businesses, generate a lot of free cash flow, even in a downturn. And we were able to meet our, our, all of our obligations and grow the company. And how did you do if you bought at the bottom? Uh, if you bought the bottom, you did quite well. I mean, okay. yes. Well, let's talk about your business. Uh, I've always felt that you have an amazing business model. It's very expensive to buy equipment. Most jobs actually don't need that. You are part of the shared economy now. We are. I mean, to your point, it is very expensive. But it's not only just the ownership of buying it. It's, that's, it's the ownership of insuring it transporting it and making sure you have the right piece of equipment for the job. Each job is completely different and we give that flexibility in, in almost any type of construction and also in the industrial market. Okay, now people have said uh, periodically, they keep doing acquisitions. What's that about? I, I think there's a tremendous value of scale here, right? There is, there is tremendous value in scale, but it's also for us, our strategic, where we are today. And by the way, over our 20 years, we've done over 270 acquisitions which is a core competency for us, but it's, it's adopting those customers and bringing them into our fold and expanding our, 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 all of our verticals. Is there anybody left to acquire? Oh, sure. There's, I mean, we, we only have about 12% market, and so there's a lot of opportunity for growth in the future. Now, uh, people, uh, when I look at it, people realize that the cash flow is great, but what I don't think they realize is how much stock you've bought back and that it's actually a bargain for you to do that. Well, you know, obviously, uh, capital allocation is a, is a big topic. Uh, we get criticized for doing share repurchases. Uh, but to your point, uh, the stock that we have, you know, purchased uh, today, it seems very, very economical, right? It's okay so, to be a good buyer. Yes. Now, uh, there's a chance that there could be more, given the fact that your tax rate is clearly a beneficiary of what's going on in Washington. Yeah, it, we don't know until hopefully this week. Uh, something will come out of, uh, out of the Congress. And uh, if they vote something in to what we've been seeing, it's obviously going to, it's going to help us with our cash flow. It's going to help us with our earnings. And uh, it's going to help us with our returns. So all positive. All right, Mike, you uh, know this business and you've been in the history of it. I'd like to think that there's a bit of what I would actually use the word boom in this country, but no one would know that, I think, other than you or I, because of your tremendous reach. Is it wrong to use the word boom, at least in parts of the country? Well, I think in parts of the country, there definitely is a boom. I mean, you go around all the major cities, and I just ask people to look up and see the cranes, see the activity. Uh, when they complain about the traffic, you know, why is it? Is it because they're doing repairs? There's a lot going on that people just don't see or they don't, it really doesn't comprehend. But there is an awful lot of positive things that are going on in our business. Now, you get terrible hurricanes uh, in Texas and Florida. 
it would seem to be that uh, people can't buy equipment just to be able to take care of those. But that would be a good situation for your you or I. I mean, no one wants to profit from the from what occurred. But then again, if you want to fix things, you don't want to buy a lot of equipment for that. It's one time only. That's true. I mean, if you think about it, uh, we bring a lot of equipment in and we did. Uh, we, we want to make sure that we help the community uh, to get back on their feet. Uh, so we do bring a lot of equipment into those marketplaces. But to your point, in the beginning, we actually take our fleet down because the, the storm comes in and then we come right back in. And it's usually the recovery is first and then reconstruction. And depending upon the, the, the level of the destruction is how long it's going to take before they re rebuild. Do you think that the uh, if the tax code goes through, what is the impact on your business besides just your capital structure and uh, your tax rate? And it, it, given the fact that it's supposed to spur great economic growth. Well, I think it will. Uh, I do, uh, because I think companies will invest. Uh, you, you could do share repurchases, but capital allocation, we did acquisitions. Uh, aside from that, we're also, you know, with our board and, and management, we're investing in other areas of our business uh, to bring on new verticals, new types of products. Uh, so those are things that I think that would excite me, uh, that we could take that capital and redeploy it. So more to, more to come. The analysts are very positive. There's a terrific, uh, really big, fantastic Bank of America Merle piece today. But let's talk about this Barclays sale for a moment, because I want people at home to know the so-called bear case of which I'm not uh, part of. Uh, the idea would be we've had a long economic expansion and it has to go uh, down and we've got this inverted yield curve and it's really not the time to be in you or I. Is that just kind of looking backward the way to think like that? Well, you know, you can always look backwards and come up with a, with a some sort of hypothesis, right? I always look to, to the future and what I see is we see a lot of positive activity, uh, whether it's the infrastructure, which would be accretive to the macro environment. If you take a look at the tax, that's going to be accretive, we, we believe. And if you take a look at just the fundamentals of our industry today is very positive, whether it be the you know, Dodge Momentum Index, which was a 13 percent improvement, or if you take a look at the construction backlog, which was at an all time high. So that's coming. No, well, I can tell you in 2018 looks very positive. I can't go much beyond that, but what we see in the future looks pretty good. Looking back, some said, well, this oil service uh, acquisition, that turned out to be ill-timed. But the fact is, with oil in the 57, 60, there's more drilling than ever and more efficiency, more pipelines. This all plays to you. Well, it does. I mean, it obviously our oil business fluctuates. It's yeah. about 12, well, I would say roughly 12 percent of our business. Now, downstream is the biggest portion of that refinery business, but that can fluctuate to your point. Right now, it, it, year over year, we've had very nice growth in, in the oil sector. Uh, over the last four months, it's kind of leveled off. But we do believe that's a viable a vertical for us, and we think that it will continue. Now, if someone wants to invest in an American company that is a, a way to be able to play all the building they see, uh, you would have to think it's a company that is really devoted to all parts of our country. It, in other words, you don't necessarily want to own Caterpillar. You get China with that. You don't necessarily want to own Turex. You get a different balance sheet. These are all fine companies, but it's really URI as a way to be able to, let's use the word, play the uh, what could be a revolution in American industry? Well, obviously, I think everyone will benefit because the two companies that you mentioned obviously sell into the rental space as well. So they will benefit it. But overall, for United Rentals, we are very, very, I would say, diverse, not only in the construction, but also to all the states that you mentioned, the United States, North America, Canada as well. So we are, our, our tentacles are very deep. Well, terrific. Mike Neal, congratulations on your 20th anniversary Thank to the day. Much. That's Michael Neal, who's president and CEO of United Rentals, and the symbol is URI. Booyah! Jim Cramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.